morning again all you aviation wing nuts it's captain t from the pilot to pilot network hey it's a little before no it's a little after <laughs> it's too early it's a little after o dark 30 in the morning the murphy is uh, finally pulled together we wanted to do some test flying and have a little fun in the cool air before the uh, day got sticky and hot so come on along we're gonna have a little fun with the murph this morning and uh see what it does come on along so what we have here is a murphy rebel built in british columbia by the murphy aircraft corporation this particular rebel is uh, 985 pounds empty weight gross weight 1650 it's equipped with a 160 horse uh, O320 Lycoming. Great big doors on a Murphy. Huge doors. They're a little hard to uh, handle because they want to fall shut all the time. Um, we get around that. I put a, I build a stop for them. But you also have these uh, gigantic windows that open up. Look at that. You can fly it with the windows open if you want to. But uh, big doors, easy to load the baggage, easy peasy. Nice little airplane. This one, uh, they originally came with a hard rubber tire. This one's been replaced with a Scott 3200. I like them better. I like them better. If I were gonna go hardcore bush flying, I would have to change the 3200 Scott to something with a little more shock absorbing capability. Also one of the drawbacks, if you're talking about real hardcore bush flying, uh, spring steel gear. Uh, the spring gear not quite what you need for bush flying. Doesn't soak up much. Too much reflex action. Big flaps and flapperons. Also a negative setting on the flaps and the flapperons. It's the uh, negative setting on the flapperons and the flaps. It's negative six degrees. Kind of hard to see, but it's there. You can see it across the airplane on the other side. Negative six. So with the uh, flaps at 30 degrees, substantial amount of flap and six degrees droop on the flapperon. You can see it against the tip. Slow speed is pretty good. Like I said, uh, <laughs> I was showing zero airspeed. We know that can't be, but that's pretty darn slow, I'll bet you. And of course, if you've been following along, you saw the great remanufactured job on the cowling. It was a pain. We got it done. That's just the top cowling. Now, this winter, probably the bottom cowling, which is an absolute disaster. Disaster. We had some issues. I think the former owner had some issues with misunderstanding airflow. So uh, he kind of butchered the lower cowl and that's all gonna go away. So that's my Murphy Rebel. I cannot wait to get everything tucked together and take a little camping trip. Huge baggage in the back behind the seat. Easy to get into. Hauls a good load. This airplane's got extended fuel tanks as, as well. It's supposed to hold uh, 48 gallons, I think. This one holds an extra 10 gallons. Hey, good morning. It's Captain T from the cockpit in uh, Murphy. It's uh, ODARK 30 plus. I don't know plus how much. All I know is I was watching the moon go down when I drove in. Uh, nice cool morning. A little fleece on, knock the chill down. It'll be hot later. Wanted to get some cool air flying with the Murph, still air, to see what it really does. And uh, added out a little bit yesterday. All good.
this Prince prop, but when you get it up, push it over for cruise, why that prop flexes and the next thing you know, you're over -rubbed. So you gotta be kind of careful. Temperatures and pressures right now looking fantastic. What a gorgeous, gorgeous morning. My goodness. I'm going to uh, attempt the dreaded stall here, doing a clearing turn. Get off away from the city. What a beautiful morning. Oh my goodness. This is why you get up at oh dark 30 in the morning to go flying. heat is out, flying in that beautiful sun, looking at the fog in the valleys. Oh my God, couldn't ask for a better day. So now that we know what the airspeed lies, uh, perhaps we can get a little better landing. Got a beauty yesterday, but uh, I think it was a fluke. Oh, maybe we'll do a low pass here and see what it looks like. And then come around and land. The airplane does not like to come out of the sky if you have any power in it. Incredible. Incredible. Hey, thanks for coming along today. We're having a ball. It don't get no better than this. Let's get some flappage in there, shall we?
about, eh? Not particularly short either. That's the way it goes some days. I think we'll put the toy away and think about what we gotta do for airspeed. I did not have the flapper hunts out in that approach. Well, just kind of a basic airplane. But we're gonna put the toys away and see uh, what we think about that airspeed indicator. Might pull the tubing off at the wing strut and uh, be about cleaning it out one more time. It's not a best tug, but it's the best I can do. Uh, still early, but it's Captain T from the Skunk Works. Beautiful flight, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous morning. Can't I just I get so geeked up about being able to see that sun come up and that fog hanging in those valleys. It was so beautifully perfect flying. The, the sky was absolutely milky smooth. Great day. What did we learn? Well, we learned that when you buy a, a uh, resurrection project. You just keep plunking on it till it's done. And that's what we got going here. I have suspected since the very beginning that the airspeed was off in this airplane. One of the reasons that I cannot make consistent landings in this airplane and cannot do a short field to save my life the way I want to is because I don't know reliably what the airspeed is. It seems after this morning's flight and, and observations that the problem with the airspeed indicator is not a linear problem. In other words, it's not off the same amount everywhere. Uh, at one point you saw me in the video attempt a uh, partial power stall with 24 degrees of flap on. I had 1100 RPMs in there. The airspeed went to zero and I was climbing at 500 feet a minute. That ain't no good. So uh, there is a way to get to that pitot tube and we're gonna take a look at that again. It was plugged when we got the airplane, we blew it out, thought probably it was okay, maybe not. I would do almost anything rather than take the airspeed indicator out of it, but if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. That's the price you pay when you resurrect an airplane. So we're gonna take a look at it this morning, see what we can do. Absolutely gorgeous flight, learned a lot. The tailwheel springs work good, temperatures and pressures are all good, senders are all good. We've replaced all of those because we had problems. Resurrection. That's what you get. Cowling's working good. That's uh, all uh, cleaned up now. Prop is working good. That was not torqued. It was causing vibrations and problems. Thanks to Lonnie Prince for your input. And we go back to work. For now, it's Captain T from the Skunk Works. I hope you have a grand Friday. So long. <laughs>